Ah, there's nothing like a burning candle. So relaxing, kind of sets the mood. And one of my favorite hobbies of all time is candle making. Oh yeah, it's Candle Making 101 tonight. And to sweeten the wax melting pot even more, we're going to have a giveaway. Oh yeah, we are. Oh my gosh, it's Mondays with Mark. I'll see you in a minute. Hey everybody, welcome to Mondays with Mark. I'm Mark and we are on Smokey Steven Mark. Oh yes we are. Oh my gosh. I am so excited about tonight's video. I, you guys say it all the time, I know. But I am, I get excited over like practically everything I think. All right, back to it. So today we're gonna be making candles. Oh yes we are. I've been wanting to do this for so long and I've had so many requests to do it. So before we get into it, if you would be so kind, please hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you'll be the first to know when we have more videos that come out, all right? We're also on Facebook at Smoky Steve Space and Mark. Shoot us a friend request, and I always post everything that we do on Facebook so you can download it and print it yourself if you want the directions or whatever. We're also on Instagram, Smoky Steve and Mark, and we're on the Twitter. Our handle is at Smoky Steve A. And in the description below is our contact information. That would be our post office box and our email address, so check that out too, okay? So, just had to get that little bit of business out of the way first, right? Are you ready to make some candles? Because I am. All right, so let's go through this. Today's uh, video is basically going to be a candle making 101 video. We'll go over the basics and we'll make a couple candles, you know. Today we're going to focus on pouring candles. Now, if we like this, I mean, I think I'm going to like it, uh, but if you like it too, we can do more videos in the future and we can kind of expand on this, right? Maybe we could make some molded candles like votives or like, I was thinking like a sandcastle candle would be pretty cool. Maybe we'll do that. We could do some tapers, maybe some hand dipped candles, something like that or just some more fancy candles than we're doing today. So let me know if you like this video in the comments below, and we'll do more, okay? All right, so for today, we are going to focus on basic candle making. And I said pouring because uh, we're literally going to pour our candles into vessels, all right? So if you're following along in real time, and if you want to do exactly what I'm doing in this video, I'm going to go over a list of um, items you'll need to do it and what I'm using in the video, okay? So the first thing you're going to need is wax. I have a bag here, and we'll get more into that later. You will need some wicks, and there's all different types of wicks too, so we'll talk about that in a minute. In addition to that, you will need some vessels. Oh yes, like that word, vessels. All right, so any type of vessel will work, really, okay? I personally like using leftover jars, like as you can see, all of my salsa jars, these make perfect candles. Um, dressing jars, any kind of jar works great, okay? And we can also use tins. We're gonna make some today out of tuna fish tins or cat food tins, uh, regular soup cans, uh, like I said, leftover jars, mason jars, make excellent candles. Uh, these are, uh, you know, wee yogurt, the wee yogurt. They are so perfect for candles, it's not even funny, let me tell you. And now, they even come decorated in all different decorations, so you can peel their label off and you have a pre-decorated jar. Pretty cool, huh? And we can also use um, any type of metal tin. These were made actually for plants at the grocery store. They were selling them. Perfect for outdoor citronella candles. Terracotta pots. Oh yeah, they make good candles too. And I'm gonna try something different too for outside. I have a hanging planter and we're going to put a citronella candle in that too. All right. So you'll need some vessels. Now, in addition to that, there are some other items you will need. Um, like if you want to uh, set yourself up for success, so to speak. Right. And if you like doing this, um, you'll want to get these things. All right. So thermometer, 
we have right here, very helpful tool. Candy thermometer works. They sell candle thermometers, you know, anything. Uh, you will need wick tabs, they call these, right? Now, we'll talk about that in a minute, too. Okay, uh, where is it at? Here we go. Wick centerers, these are very, very handy. They're called wick stabilizers, actually. We'll talk about that in a minute. Then you'll need some scents, if you'd like. Essential oils work the best. And if you so choose coloring to color your wax, I just threw that on the floor. Um, they sell these everywhere on Amazon, Walmart. Um, and then any type of accents you might like, maybe some Jewett twine to tie, you know, to put, tie around the outside of your jar. Uh, washi tape makes really, really great accents. You know, anything like that. But again, we'll talk about that later. And last but not least, you may want to make some labels, candle labels, if you're, especially if you're going to give these as gifts. You know, like the kind that says, "Never let a candle burn unintended," as if people need to know that. But you may want to do that, and it's nice also to say it's homemade, right? <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Okay, let me put this over here. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is cover your entire work area, and I found that newspapers or brown craft paper perfect. It soaks up all that wax because, let me tell you, it gets everywhere. And definitely do not do this over a carpeted rug. It's a bear to get out of rug. It is. It's a bear to get out of rug. How'd you like that? Mm -hmm. It's a bear to get out of the rug. Is that right? Ar I don't know. Articles Whatever. are a nice part of the <laughs> English language. <laughs> Alright, so we covered our work area and we're going to prepare our vessels. Now, what I mean by that is if you're using jars, if you're using tins or anything like that, you want to make sure you take all the labels off, wash them, and dry them inside and out so they're all ready to go. Let's see, for today we're going to do, let's see, we'll do a can, we'll do a jar, that sounds good, we'll just do that for show. All right, so that is prepared and we're going to now place our wicks. Now, wicks come in all different sizes, shapes, and forms. I got these uh, off of Amazon and these are 100% cotton wicks and they are pre-waxed. That means the wick has some wax on it. I recommend that because I feel like they burn better and they're a lot easier to handle too. And always get a wick that has a tab at the bottom, okay? makes it a lot easier. Now wicks come in all different types. They come in different sizes. Um, there's wood wicks, which are super nice because when they burn, they give a nice crackling sound to them too, you know? There's also ribbon wicks, but for today, we're using regular cotton pre-waxed wicks. And I always get them um, in this, which I, I believe are 10 inch wicks, because I like to be able to cut them down. When I get them too short, sometimes they don't fit in the jar. So I got these. Um, again, you know, I'm not, um, I'm not pushing any product or anything, but if you want to know where to get these, or if you'd like to know the exact brand and everything that I'm using, definitely shoot me an email and I'll get that to you. And I'll list a couple of them in the description below too, okay? So let's get a wick ready here. And we're going to place our wicks in. Now, I did say something about these tabs. These tabs are fantastic. What they are meant for, I can hold it, you are going to place them on the bottom here and then they stick to the bottom of your vessel. Makes it a lot easier. They don't move around or anything. They have a self-stick um, two-sided thing here where you peel these off both sides and then we stick it on the bottom like this. And then we peel the bottom off, and then we put it down into our jar. And I'm going to show you a little trick on doing that. But a little note about these tabs. Obviously, I did say that this was an optional item. It does make life a lot easier. But if you don't have these or don't want to get them, you could also use just a little dot of hot glue if you have a hot glue gun. Um, I've even seen people use super glue to hold them in place and uh, poster putty, too, to hold them in place, too. But this is my preference. Um, I'd recommend getting them. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to the next step uh, in preparing our vessels is to place the wicks in. So using a tab, we took off the tape on or the little cover on both sides of the tab, and it makes a nice little sticky thing. Now, if you were to try to put that in there, and you know, it's it's 
it's a little difficult, but here's a little tip. This is just a um, the outer casing of an ink pen that uh, is now hollow. Pop your wick through there like that, and you have a much easier way of putting them down in there. Well, here, let's do it so you can see. All right. We'll use a clear one here. And we're going to put this down with our pen cover, just like so, in the center, and then push it down. And voila! <laughs> Cute tip, huh? Uh, so we're going to do that with all of our vessels, right? Okay, let me move this out of the way. Okay. And uh, so that's basically ready to go. Now, after you have all your wicks in your vessels, it's recommended. Now, this is a controversy in the candle making world, I know. But you at the very least want to keep your vessels at room temperature. However, it is recommended, and I recommend it myself, to keep all of your jars and your cans and your vessels heated a little bit. And that is just keep them in the oven with just your pilot light on or your oven light on. It raises the temperature a little bit and it helps as far as once we pour the wax in it, it's not quite such a shock in temperature, like the difference in temperature. It really, really helps out a lot. And we'll talk about that once we get to the wax, okay? So I showed you how to do that and now our jars and our cans are all ready to go, okay? So we'll set that aside, all right. I just want to make sure we have enough room here. <laughs> Move that out of the way. All right. So next we, uh, I'm going to make sure I don't forget anything. All right. So next we're going to talk about wax. All right. Now, I'm using, uh, this is called, I want to make sure I get the name right on here. I'm using, a, it's called Freedom Soy Wax. Uh, and these are beads. Now, the beads are a fairly new product. I mean, fairly new. They've been around for a while. And this is my... Um, I do prefer to use this. There's all different types of wax. There's soy wax, beeswax, paraffin wax. There's even, like, paraffin wax blends that have half soy, half paraffin. They all have their own unique characteristics and, well, idiosyncrasies, we'll say. Um, but I think for a great place to start for a beginner, or even if you are an expert, soy wax works the best. And if you can grab the beads because they have the added benefit of being microwavable. So cool. Oh my gosh. I can't tell you how cool that is. All right. It is. So, um, we have our wax here and um, what we're going to do is we have to melt it. Now with these beads there's two ways. We can microwave it or we can do it old school with a double boiler. And a double boiler is just a pot with some water in it and then another pot that sits over it or sits in it to melt. I have some wax going there that's, that's melting and I just used a metal pitcher like so. And I got this at the, at the thrift store for like a buck or something, you know, but you could use a bowl or anything. And a lot of candle kits today already come with a pitcher uh, in it. And there's all different types. There's this kind, you know, I have this too. I have about five of them, but we only need to use one today. So anyway, you can melt it over a double boiler or we can microwave it. Now, a microwave safe bowl, best way to go. I found these at the dollar store. I love these. These are soup cups, uh, plastic soup cups at the dollar store, and they hold about three cups of liquid. Perfect for candle pouring and melting and making. I, I'm telling you, it's so great. So now at this point, we're going to measure our wax and pour. So we're going to do both. We're going to do it in double boiler and we're going to do it in the microwave. Now, as far as measuring goes, like, for example, if we're going to make ours in, um, this little one here, right? And we're going to pour the dry wax in there like that. If you have a big block of wax, of course, you're going to want to chop it all up. You're going to use this amount plus this amount, and you'll have enough wax for your vessel in any size. So just double the amount of dry wax that fits in it, and you'll be set to go. Now, I'm not so much, uh, you know, I'm not a big measurer when it comes to this because I always have a lot of different little molds or little jars or cans left over that I can use for leftover wax, right? So I don't really measure it too much, but if you want to be specific, just double the amount of 
dry wax that fits into your jar. All right, and now if we're microwaving it, we're gonna pop this into the microwave over here, uh, and we're gonna do it on 20 second intervals, 20 second intervals until it's um, completely clear and melted all the way through, all right? So, um, where's my lid go? No, we don't need a lid. You could put the lid on or not, it doesn't matter. All right, two, one. All right, and I just happen to have some ready to go for you. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's what you want it to look like. All right, put it over here. Now, grab yourself a wooden spoon of some sort, give it a stir. As you can see, it's clear. There's, you know, it's ready to go, totally ready to go. So we will temp it. Let's take a look at this. Oh, and our double boiler. That's exactly what you want as well. Now, at this point, you can turn off the heat and just let it sit in there, and it'll stay at that. It'll stay nice and ready to use. And we're going to check our thermometer. Perfect. I don't know if you can see it or not. But what we're aiming for is we want to heat our wax up to at least... 180 degrees Fahrenheit, all right? This allows for proper expansion of the wax and it allows it to accept scent and accept like color very well. If it's a lower temperature, it won't do as well, all right? It needs to cure properly. And in order for that to happen, we need to bring it up to a temperature of 180 at least. And then we're gonna set it aside and let it cool down and you, you want to get to about 120, 130, 140, right around there. That's the perfect pouring temperature for melted wax. Now, I have this ready to go, and this is at 130, okay? So it's ready. I'm going to take this out and let it just set here and cool off a little bit because it's just a little bit too hot. Now, if I were, if I were going to pour this um, at... 180, 200 degrees, what you'll find happens is once it dries and cures, you really, really, really get um, uh, these, well, I can't remember what they call it, the indents. Like what happens is, is that the wax shrinks and then you have a little divot in the top of your candle. We don't want that. Now I'm going to show you how we can fix it, but if you do it at 120, 130 degrees, you won't have that problem. It won't crack, nothing else, okay? So let's get going here. Um, I don't know if I have enough to pour in there. Okay, let me get this one ready. Okay, I got that one ready. All right, so um, at this point, we're gonna want to center our, um, our wick. These things are so handy, these wick stabilizers. All you do is slip them through the hole, set it on top and your wick is nice and centered and it won't move around. It's fantastic. I love it. Now, if you don't have that, you could use a popsicle stick. You could use chopsticks. Uh, you could even use some tape along there too if you want to stabilize it. I would recommend doing something because the wicks do have a tendency to go like this whenever you add the hot wax to it. All right. So our wax is at 180 degrees and this is the point where we can add our scents. Um, Let's see what we're gonna do. I'm gonna do citronella first. How about that? I have so many. Look, lemon, lavender. Oh my gosh, I, it's so hard to pick. What is it? Peppermint. Oh, peppermint will be a good one. Okay, I'm doing too much here. All right. So we're gonna use citronella, okay? And a good rule of thumb is about one ounce of scent to one pound of wax. Just a general rule of thumb. Now, I recommend getting essential oils as opposed to those cheap scents that you get like at the dollar store and stuff, they are much stronger and you really could use half the amount. You don't need that much whenever you're using essential oils. So this is um, citronella and I'm gonna add a bunch in. In fact, let me pop this off because I wanna put a bunch in there. All right, I'm gonna add about half the bottle. Ooh, I can smell it, it smells good. I'm making a mess. And give it a stir. And you want to stir it for at least 10 to 15 seconds to let that all incorporate in there. Now, um, you can mix your scents too, like you could do a peppermint lavender. I know it sounds crazy, but it smells very good. All right, so that's ready to go. Now, at this point, if you wanted to color your wax, this is the time you would do it as well. 
I have a bunch of colors here. I have red, blue, green. I'm just going to go natural for my citronella candle. But this is where you would add, and, and there's no real science to it. You just want to keep adding your coloring to it until you get your desired color. We can go into more of that like in another video if you want to learn about mixing colors and scents and stuff. All right. So at this point, we are ready to go. All I smell is citronella. Oh, it smells so good. And you know what? Now, the pour. I'm gonna try to get, look, I'm going to try to do this with my left hand here. Pour it in until you get it to the height that you want. That's perfect. Right there. Okay. And what I'm going to do, because I did this backwards, I'm going to flip. Well, here, I'll show you on this one. I'm going to flip that. I'm going to flip this over because I have it sitting down in the sitting down in the wax and we don't want that. So I'm going to show you how this one works here. All right. So that was that one. Let's use our this wax so I can show you how this works. All right. Uh, this is our wax that we melted in a double boiler. Okay. So we're going to pour that in. Can you see? Okay. At least I have it with my right hand now. And we're just going to pour it all the way up to the top, maybe an inch below, just like so. Okay. Now, now as you can see, if you can see, the wick kind of moved around a little bit. This is when you want to make sure that your wick is stable by pulling it up, just like so. See how it's nice and centered all the way down to the bottom? And this is holding it. And like I said, if you don't have these stabilizers, take a popsicle stick, put a hole in the center of it, and pull it up through. I mean, you can't go wrong, all right? So at this point, what we need to do, walk away. We're going to let them cool, okay? And you need to do that. I mean, really, these need to cure, okay? So you don't even want to mess with them for a few hours until it's completely cooled down and you'll be able to tell it'll be solid all the way through. So I'm going to say you need at least four to five hours to do that, if not overnight. Now, when you're adding scent to it, you're probably going to want to let it go for a few days to let that cure inside there. Okay. But it will be able to be burnt after, um, four to five hours of cooling. Okay. But I recommend overnight. Now, I left work early today, so I do have a few hours. I didn't even get dressed into my hair or nothing. So I have the time to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the rest of these jars up, right? And maybe I'll change into a different outfit or something. Maybe fix my hair or something. I don't know if you've seen the new hairdo or not. So maybe I'll do that and I'll check back in with you in about four hours. So let me turn on the magical time machine. And I'll see you soon. And we are back. <laughs> that was so much fun. Oh my gosh. I should do the magical time machine more often. Ah, it was so much fun. I mean, it's been like, what, five hours for me and probably like, what, two seconds for you? How cool is that? I don't know. Just my thoughts. So, where we left off. I was able to finish pouring all of my candles for today. Uh, as you can see, they turned out pretty cool. And we're going to go right on to the next step. But first, I promised you a giveaway. Oh, yeah, I did. And you have an opportunity to win your very own candle making kit. Oh, yeah. And what's in it? Well, everything you need to make your very own candles. You don't have to get everything separately, right? So I thought that'd be pretty cool. I'm going to ship it straight from Amazon, so I will need your address if you win, all right? So to enter this contest, all you have to do is make sure you hit the subscribe button and comment below this video. We'll use the randomizer this Friday and we'll pick the winner, okay? Um, we're going to do it on Friday because I think Friday's like the fun day, if you know what I mean, all right? So Comment below, hit subscribe, and you're entered to win your very own candle making kit. So, let's continue on. So, what did we, so, we left off by, you know, we poured our candles and we let them sit for about four hours. And as you can see, they're all set up and ready to handle. Now, I know the temptation is strong. You're probably going to want to burn them right away. I do too, right? But please do me a favor. 
they do need time to cure, okay? So let them sit at least overnight, okay, after this point. Uh, you want to let them cure, and it just actually a little... A very slow chemical reaction happens there, and, you know, the scent binds to the wax and things like that, and it just, it just, it makes your candles burn more evenly and better the longer you let them cure, all right? So, at least let them sit for a day, okay? All right. So, what we're going to do now, let's see, which one will we use? We'll use this one here. we we'll use our little tin here. So, now we're going to take our little um, candle stabilizer off, like so. And we're going to trim our wicks. You want to trim your wick to about quarter inch to a half inch, all right? And just snip it off. I don't know if I really have to show you this, but you just want to snip them off so you have a little bit of a wick, like so, all right? So we'll do that to all of ours. And I wanted to show you, I tried to make a mistake so I could show you what happens, but they all turned out good except this one. When you pour your candles when they're too hot, you will get shrinkage and you'll get divots and cracks sometimes, just like that. Now that's a tiny little one, but sometimes they're a lot bigger than that. So, easy fix. Never fear, there's a fix for everything. If you have a heat gun, you can use that and just swirl it over the top. It'll fix it like, like that. You can use a hair dryer, but it will take a little longer. Or if you have any leftover wax that you had melted, I always save just a tiny little bit in the bottom of the container. Uh, pour it right over it, takes care of it, and your problem is solved. So let me trim this. Go there. And look, these were our wee jars. Very nice. I don't know if you can see that, but I added a little bit of glitter in there. Just to, you know, mix it up a little bit. So we're going to cut that. And this one was the very last of the wax that I had. So the next time I pour candles, I'm going to do a different color. So we'll have a two-tone candle on that one. All right, get that off. Oh, we don't have to show that. Did that. Did that. And our big jar here. Let's see. Let me bring this around here. Take our wick out. We're going to trim it, and I'll tell you what, the cans, they're like my absolute favorite, especially for outside. Like these little ones here, imagine sitting these uh, like on a picnic table, a couple of them on a picnic table, or by the grill, or wherever at you're outside. This will burn all day, all evening, and uh, I scented them citronella, so, and it, so it helps with the bugs too. Um, now. I, uh, so now we're on to the point where we can add to our final touches, like our accents, the fun part of it, right? So, very simply, uh, you know, the simplest way to do it is stickers or whatever. Like, look at how, okay, so that's a plain can. And just by adding a little bling, it changes the whole look of it. And that, these are self-stick bling stickers. Mm. So, you know, I really do. I think it looks really, really nice for something so simple. And yes, I've done this before. The tin does heat up a little bit, but it doesn't do anything to the stickers. It's totally fine, okay? And uh, let's see, let's try this one. For example, doing a holiday one, I found these stickers in my stash. I mean, you know, it just adds something to it, you know? Pretty nice, right? Now, these are my latest thing that I'm obsessed with. They are sticker wraps, and they usually are, you know, blinged out like this or whatever. But imagine how that would look wrapped all the way around a jar or a can. Hmm. Yeah, so there's that. And then you could tie some bows, you could use some twine, ribbon, whatever you want to do. Um, Customize it to the way you like it, right? Um, so, okay, so we did that, we did that. I gave you some ideas. Oh, washi tape, that's what I wanted to show you. So this is our plain one, right? And I dug into my washi tape, uh, you know, supply that I have. And just by adding a little, see, like that. And there's one like that. <laughs> so just a couple ideas of how you can customize it and make it like a little bit special, you know. So clean up.
the fun part, right? All right, so hopefully you had your uh, work surface completely covered with newspaper or craft paper or something. This will just lift up and be great. All of your containers, if you did microwave, you have the plastic ones. If you did the double boiler, you'll have a pitcher. Once you get all of the wax out of there while it's still warm, just take some paper towels or some newspaper and wipe everything out on the inside and you're ready to go for next time. I would not pour hot wax down your drain. You'll have some troubles, okay? All right, just had to say that. Not that I ever did it. I never did that. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> so, now you know the basics of candle making. And, uh, you know, you, you can uh, make your own decor for your home or even better yet, make gifts for other people. I think there's nothing more special than a handmade candle from a friend. Really, I think it's, it's just a fantastic gift for someone. And have fun. Experiment. Uh, try all kinds of different things. Uh, like I said, if you like this video, I mean, I had a ton of fun doing this today. I hope you did too. If you like it, we'll do more. For example, we can talk about how we can take regular taper candles and actually use these as wicks inside of candles. Really, really cool, and it burns completely differently. Really neat. We can also talk about how we can use all kinds of scrap wax. Uh, you know, sometimes you got those little wax pancakes at the bottom of your pillars that you can't do anything with. Uh, we can melt those and make brand new candles from them. We can even make ice candles. We could make chunk candles, which is a load of fun. We could do mold candles. The possibilities are endless and so, so, so much fun, right? 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 Okay, good. I just had to make sure that you were having a good time. All right. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you try this out yourself. I hope I inspired you to maybe try something you never did before. And if you do, definitely send me a picture because I totally would love to see what you came up with. All right. So thanks again, everybody, for watching. Remember to hit that subscribe button. And uh, I think all the business is done. I think all the fun is done. The last thing I wanted to remind you... Remember to enter our contest, hit subscribe, comment below, and you'll be entered to win your very own candle kit. Okay, <laughs> guys, thank you again so much for watching. It was a fantastic time spent with you today. It really was. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Remember, everybody, stay safe, stay well, but above all else, stay positive, all right? I'll see you next time. Ciao!